Pentagon monitoring reports of possible Russian chemical weapons attack in Mariupol. So, the fighting in Mariupol has been brutal and ongoing um, for a while. Ukraine accuses Russia of chemical weapons attack in Mariupol. Ukrainian forces and officials have accused Russia of dropping chemical weapons in the port city of Mariupol, causing troops and civilians alike to develop respiratory illnesses. Russian occupation forces used a... Maybe they, um... Um... Maybe they dropped some of the, uh, uh expired Russian MREs. Um... On the Ukrainian forces. Well, you just, um... See, the general in charge of the Mariupol offensive is now in charge of the whole war for Russia. Really? Well, Mariupol is where the fighting is heaviest right now, I think. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. The Pentagon could not confirm social media reports Russian forces have deployed it. Yeah, what, what is the evidence? British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said our government is working urgently to verify details. This is from just a, two hours ago. Hey, Merrick. Pentagon spokesperson said the reports were not confirmed. They reflect U.S. concerns about Russia's potential to use a variety of riot control agents, including tear gas mixed with chemical agents. Russia were to be found to have used chemical weapons in the strategic holdout city. It would represent a major escalation of the conflict and present a direct challenge to NATO members. Hmm. This apparently originally came from the Azov, so take it with a grain of salt. Really? Oh, yes, I remember that. Um, Twitter. Give independent they uh yes i saw this in which they reported the <coughs> god damn it <sighs> they reported the azov battalion put this forward and they stupidly put two lightning bolts in front of it azov regiment russia used poisonous substance against ukrainian troops in mariupol the substance has been distributed by a drone uh and victims have shortness of breath and vestibulo cerebellar Ataxia. Uh huh. I, I get that. A progressive neurological disorder that causes a variety of medical problems. How, how would they know after such a short time? Huh. Galt and coordination issues. Eye twitchiness as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, it would be a major escalation. Additionally, I don't know how much it makes sense for Russia to do this, especially considering the fact that they must know at this point, you know, even Putin, with all the yes-men he surrounded himself by, even he must understand that victory in this war is, is just not on the table, not total victory, at least. The fighting in Mariupol, you know, he, he wants to maintain the territory that he has. And um, given that, the likelihood of the deployment of chemical weapons just comes across as... <sighs> I suppose we'll have to see. Um, here. This is part of the corridor they want to maintain for the sake of Crimea, correct? Yes, yes, that's right. Down here, here's the map. So, the reason the fighting is still very heavy in Mariupol is because the, um, one of the more obvious goals of the occupation of Ukraine was to secure a land channel uh, to Crimea from the major Russian body right here uh, without having to cross uh, across the Black Sea or deal with any of that business. And uh, Mariupol is directly on that route. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the fighting has been so heavy here. According to Ukraine, tens of thousands of civilians have been lost in Mariupol. I'd be, um, I'd be very interested to know their methods for determining this. If that's the case, then Mariupol has more civilian casualties than the rest of the war effort combined, pretty much, or almost. Over 10,000 civilians have been killed in the southeastern Ukrainian city of Mariupol, a number that could eventually double, the city's mayor told the Associated Press on Monday. As Russian forces close in on the key city, 
ahead of a larger offensive in eastern Ukraine. If Mayor's dire predictions prove accurate, the Mariupol death toll reaches 20,000. It will remount to almost 5% of the coastal city's pre-war population of over 400,000. Yeah, Zelensky said that tens of thousands of them had died already. The mayor told the AP dead bodies are carpeted throughout the streets, and he repeated his unverified allegation from last week that Russia is using mobile crematoria in Mariupol. We'll see. Um, there's a limited extent to which I think the mobile crematoria can be effective here because um, Ukraine will eventually know how many have died as a product of this war. Like, this isn't Syria. Every citizen in Ukraine, I mean, they're registered with the government. There are birth certificates. There are records. Um, they're going to have a pretty accurate knowledge of how many people died as a product of this war. Uh, I, I mean, these aren't just like people out in the villages in Afghanistan where if you disappear the body and the family, then that's that, you know. Um, there are records that can be tracked. Uh, and the uh, the excess death toll, I think, will be... I thought Syria had birth certificates. My understanding was that the record keeping was uh, subpar in, in many parts of Syria. Uh, especially as the, the the conflict raged on further and further, you know. Also, with uh, all the refugees that left as well. Russia is deporting Ukrainians into Russia, so the death versus deported may never be known. That is true. Hmm. Capturing Mariupol is likely a key priority for Russia. The city could form part of a land bridge connecting Russia's mainland with the Russia-annexed Crimean Peninsula, and it lies within eastern Ukraine's Donetsk region which borders Russia. Yeah, this city is incredibly important to them. Massively, massively important. Hold on, live UA map. Let's go back to old reliable, huh? Red is Russian control, more or less. Um, yes, as you can see, Mariupol has not been fully taken, but uh, they have the surround. It would not be surprising at all to me if uh, Ukraine lost Mariupol. The question would be whether Zelensky would want to continue the fight until reclaiming all this territory, which I think he could do eventually, or if he would be willing to genuinely cede the Donbass region. I would be surprised by that. They have a gas mask icon. That is the alleged chemical weapons attack. Azov regiment said Russian troops use kind of chemical drop from a drone. Yeah. In your opinion, what's the most terrifying type of warfare? For me, it's biological or psychological warfare. Well, there's a reason why chemical warfare is, um, is banned, you know. There is a unique kind of danger that it presents. What if they opened windows? True, there is an option open to them. Nuclear is obvious. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, nuclear is very, very bad. Yes, of course. Um, hmm. Still fighting over Kyrgyzstan, it seems. It looks like Russia mostly has control over it. It is incredible how effectively the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to beat back Russia all in the north. I mean, look at them. They've been pushed back into Belarus. Um, remarkable stuff there. Uh, Kharkiv, my old home. Still held. Quite a bit of shelling as well. Did other countries threaten Russia that if chemical weapons were used, there'd be retaliation? I believe so. Um, it certainly indicates a significant uh, escalation. I have to wonder. Um, it's genuinely remarkable that Mariupol has held out this long. Look, it's the only region in this entire strip that hasn't been conquered. You see? I mean, this is it. This is, I mean... What, a few hundred acres? Maybe? Maybe a few thousand? The rest of it is held uniformly, with the major lines of conflict being there at Kharkiv, of course. Kyrgyzstan will probably be retaken at some point. Do you still not support the no-fly zone? No-fly zone means World War III. Um, so yes, I continue to not support the no-fly zone. Uh, I don't really know what NATO powers can do outside of providing additional equipment to Ukraine. But there's always additional equipment that could be provided to Ukraine. What's the red line over on the left? This one? This is the Transnistria region of Moldova. It's essentially a Russian-controlled strip on the eastern edge of the country. Uh, that I think 
Did did they ever launch an attack? Have they just stayed there? I think there was some fighting. Um. No? Okay, they've just stayed there, I guess. It's only a few thousand troops here. I don't think they would last very long. Um, eventually the fight for the port city of Odessa will be crucial. Um, Odessa, Odessa, where? I forget where. Odessa. Odessa? Odessa, Odessa? Oh, Odessa. Not uh, taken just yet. I would be extremely surprised if Odessa got taken. Uh, you know, the, the Russian armed forces have been on the back foot for a while. And, um, yeah, the, I mean, they, they would have to travel quite a distance. Yeah, this, this would be a whole other holding. I don't know if the Transnistrian Russian forces would, like, join in for that or whatever, but... I, I mean, I agree they want it. You know, they wanted all of it. Uh, yeah, I'm not a military strategist, but judging how things have been going so far... Yeah, the the fighting back from Ukraine is probably going to be mostly radial circling out from Kiev. You know, Kiev was able to beat back an enormous holding of Russian forces. There are no doubt a greater concentration of troops and equipment in this area than there are um, elsewhere, except for maybe here at the edge of the Donbass um, holding where Russia has made no gains. Look at this! Over a month into the war, that red line right there is where the line of conflict was before the war began. Look at, look at them, they got, they got an acre here. Look at them. Um, probably a huge holding here, and a massive holding in the Kiev area. They're probably clearing out pockets. You see little red lines of Russian control uh, over there. Um, but anyway, as, as strength... Uh, radiates outward from Kiev, Odessa is going to be a very dangerous place to hold. Like, a very dangerous place. See? Um, you have all of these, like, straits that cut in from the bay, meaning that I, I feel like if they made a move for Odessa, it would be relatively easy for Kiev to cut them off, like, here, you know? Like, on the line that already exists to Kherson. I mean, yeah, it, it, could, it could be quite difficult, I think, for them. Um, I suppose we'll see how things continue to go. Do you think there's any point in this conflict outside Russia declaring war directly where NATO intervention would be justified? They use nukes. No, soy master, don't mistake what they say for what they do. NATO involvement directly would be a much, 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 much greater um, threat to them than us just providing arms. Yes, I've heard that Finland is joining NATO and Sweden as well, which is very funny. <laughs> um, but yes, if, if Russia used nuclear weapons, and while I do think that's very unlikely, it should be noted that it has been a part of Russian military doctrine to... Uh, retreat from conflicts by deploying nuclear weapons in the midst of their retreat, you know, like sort of leave a nation and then just drop a few nukes where they've been. That's been a sort of theoretical operational doctrine for the Soviet Union continuing into Russia. Um, if, if something like that were to happen, very unlikely, but if it were to happen, um, I, I, it, it seems like NATO would have to annihilate Russia. Putin purged a huge amount of FSB agents, perceived incompetence, perhaps, embarrassing the party. Whew. Man, this is embarrassing. <laughs> God. Mass purge of Russian secret intelligence is underway after more than 100 agents were removed from their jobs. And the head of the department responsible for Ukraine was sent to prison? Oh, and some of them have been arrested? Ha! <laughs> Serves them right. They've been the architects of Russia's, um, of Russia's, uh, 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 foreign policy here. I can't say I feel that bad for them, you know? It's not like these are rank-and-file soldiers, after all. Um, Jesus, that is embarrassing. You know, nothing makes a strong man look worse than, like, panic-firing their entire goddamn, 
uh, you know, party bureaucracy after something doesn't go their way. At the end of the day, the person most responsible for this failure is none other than Vladimir Putin. Uh. All those ousted were employees of the Fifth Service. Yeah. Jesus. Yes, authoritarian governments do often do this stuff, but it just looks so embarrassing. Sergei Beseda has been sent to Lefortovo prison in Moscow after he was placed on a house arrest last month. Jeez. Well. Ah, Kadyrov, the uh, Chechen Nazi, most notably continuing to not be in the line of conflict. What's up, man? Don't you want to stain those Prada boots of yours with the blood of uh, Ukrainians? Why not go over here, outside of the red? Come on. Come on. Baby. Pussy. Beta. Yeah, just go north of it, you strong man. I do find him very silly to look at. He looks like a very goofy guy, you know? He's a very bulbous, just like, like his whole face has been inflated a little bit, you know? And he has that haircut. Um, yeah. He's a, a bit of a goober. It look, I mean, he looks, he looks a little bit like, um, like a, like a Three Stooges type. You know what I mean? Russia is moving missiles near Finland, unconfirmed. From reports, Russian force line red region near city of Vyborg. Heavy military equipment, including K-300P Bastion coastal defense missile systems towards the Gulf of Finland and Finnish border. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Even if this was true, this is pretty standard, like, Russian stuff. Like, you know, you move, you threaten us in some way by defending yourself, we'll posture by bringing missiles closer to you. Again, please keep in mind, the, the modern-day ICBMs can deliver nuclear payloads all around the world, you know, moving missile systems closer to the border with Finland. If, if Finland entered war with Russia, you know, that would be it. <laughs> um, so conventional warfare, unlikely. Nuclear warfare doesn't really change with them moving the missiles closer. Russian economy is about to default in its debts. Oh, based. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Default in its foreign debt because it offers bondholders payments in rubles, not dollars. <sighs> Russia attempted to pay in rubles for two dollar-denominated bonds that matured on April 4th, S&P said in a note on Friday. The agency said this amounted to a selective default because the investors are unlikely to be able to convert the rubles into dollars equivalent to the originally due amounts. Oh, no! No, 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 no. Russia cannot access roughly 315 billion of its currency uh, reserves as a result of Western sanctions imposed following its invasion of Ukraine. Until last week, the United States allowed Russia to use some of its frozen assets to pay back certain investors in dollars. But the U.S. Treasury has since blocked the country from accessing its reserves in American banks. <laughs> Damn, dude. This is, uh, this is what we call a, a, a subprime mortgage loan. Listen, this, uh, this, this creditor is so bad that uh, uh, Wall Street's about to package it with AAA bonds and gamble on them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whoo. That's rough. Uh. How didn't they expect this? Why did they have so much money in foreign banks? Well, there's nothing they could really do. See, listen, international finance is really, really complicated, but the way it works is like the US dollar is the international unit of currency for trade, uh, flat out. And when a country sells something to us and we pay in US dollars, they now have in their accounts US dollars. 
not their own currency. See, currency exchanges do literally that. They exchange currencies. Whether you're talking about $10 or $10 billion, you're not creating more of one currency and dissolving that amount of the other. And what this means functionally is that every country as a product of the insanely complicated global economy has an incredible amount of money in a variety of currencies, though mostly U.S. dollars, again, international unit of currency for trade, uh, invested everywhere. Uh, you know, it's the same with the U.S. We have our, our country's international reserves, you know, and the debts held by our economy. Those are mixed up in countries all over the world, mostly in our currency, but not entirely. This is one of the reasons why we're on top economically. As long as the U.S. dollar is the uh, international unit of currency, you know what that means? Every country on earth is going to have significant uh, reserve holdings in our currency, which means that if our currency loses value, say like we get invaded or we have an economic collapse, the entire world suffers. There's no getting around that. In this case, so supreme is our hegemony that Russia's foreign reserves were held up in our institutions. Oops. Well, to be fair, it's not like they really had um, another choice. Uh, with the sanctions being laid on as thick as they are right now, it's pretty much uh, the only thing they could really do to hold foreign reserves. Yeah, the thing goes on. They're propping up the currency, the ruble, uh, on their own right now, but this is going to have disastrous long-term consequences for their economy, defaulting on foreign debt. Yeah, I've seen it so awful. Yes, yes, the Chechen fighters are our monsters. Yes, they, they, uh, they gleefully execute civilians. Would you say American economic hegemony is actually beneficial in this case? Well, it's certainly beneficial for us. What is this? Russia is doing some serious history writing saying Genghis Khan was Russian. Russia colonized North and South America. What? Supposedly? I would need to, uh, yeah, I'll need to look into this before I can say anything. This is 52 points. Yeah, okay, I'll look into this later. Um, what are your thoughts about cryptocurrency in general? It's dumb. It's just speculation. Um, anyway. They seem pretty cuckarinoed. Russia is now planning legal action. We will sue because we undertook all necessary actions so that investors would receive their payments. Finance Minister Anton Silonov told Pro Kremlin Izvestia newspaper on Monday. We'll show the court proof of our payments to confirm our efforts to pay in rubles, just as we did in foreign currency. It won't be a simple process. He did not say who Russia planned to sue. Yeah, who are you going to sue? Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said in a press conference last week that any default would be artificial because Russia has the dollars to pay, it just can't access them. Dude, when's the, when's the sanction? When's the button we press where we allow our government to just, or, or our government allows all of the, um, all of the holders of, Russians froze, of Russia's frozen assets to just absorb their wealth? Where is that button? Like 315 billion of its foreign currency reserves are, are tied up right now. Where's the button where it's just like, oh, do you hold, do you hold those reserves, uh, Bank of America? It's yours now. How wild would that be? That would be like the ultimate, uh, whew. all these American banks. It's yours now. Congratulations. Ooh. Yes, the, uh, the yoink button. Can they even do that? Uh, you can do anything you want if you don't mind making people mad. Uh, so what the U.S. did in Afghanistan but based? I would say there's definitely a couple of differences between sanctions that we've levied at, like, Western imperialism-torn, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, religious fundamentalist-ravaged uh, sand pits. And Russia, I'd say there's a fundamental distinction there. But, you know, now what is Putin going to do about it? Start a nuclear war? Ha! Cool. 
All right, that's enough. We're done with Ukraine. Get out of here. Go. Skedaddle.